What's up guys, this is Alex from Xtrades. Today I'm going to be going in depth on um, how I go through 270 tickers on the weekend basically and create a watch list out of them. You can see right here I go in order. Um, I go from the highest uh, percent change down to the lowest. And I got ticker symbol Mara right here. I really liked how this is setting up for basically kind of like a falling wedge setup. Um, you can see that it pops out. Um, had a couple days of consolidation and now it's starting to break to the upside uh, while crypto is on fire. It looks like I go ahead and draw a supply zone right here. And uh, I would probably use that as a target um, if I were looking to trade calls on this ticker. And uh, you know, it's important to add your support and resistance. You can draw Fibonacci retracements if you want. Oh, I did in this example. And this is probably another important part coming up here. So essentially when I'm, when I'm creating the trade ideas list for the weekend, I'm putting the ticker name, I'm putting a brief description of what I see, and I will put if I'm going to trade calls or puts, basically. So after you get your first bulletin, um, I just put the ticker, brief description, and then I'll put if I trade calls or puts. And that's one ticker on the watch list. And then I'll go ahead and go to another bulletin. Looks like we have STNE next. And the good thing about, you know, typing these out and writing it down is that, you know, you, you're essentially typing out your bias, right? And sort of like a, a little plan and visual, visualization of what you see. And I think I think it's really important because um, you don't want to just take a trade just because. And another thing that um, you'll be seeing a couple of in this video is setting alerts, uh, setting alerts at key points of resistance, or setting alerts at trend lines. And that pretty much preps you for the future. Whenever the targets hit, you'll be ready. <clears throat> so it looks like STNE is kind of putting in a double bottom right here. Um, I wouldn't say it's exactly ready to be set up yet. Uh, but we'll go ahead and draw an alert. Or I'm sorry, just add an alert. And you just right click and hit add alert and put your desired level. So here you can put um, STNE resistance breakout just like how you see there and we wait for that to hit. And I, I fast forward any of the uh, tickers that I don't end up adding but I wanted you guys to see that I look at these pretty in depth and uh, I, I go over a lot of tickers um, to narrow down a good watch list or even just trade ideas. And half the time, I don't even trade all of them. I mean, I, I trade one or two maybe. Um, but the point is, is that you're prepping, right? You're spending your weekend and um, I mean, it could only take a couple hours, you know? I mean, it's, it's not too much work. I go through 270 tickers and it's worth it at the end because it narrows it down to some solid setups. It looks like here we got our next one. Um, this is IONQ. It's actually a pretty new stock, I believe. And you can see it's poking out of that downtrend. You got a nice demand zone. You got a pretty big supply zone overhead. I'd probably use that as a target. 
In our first um, example on Mara, you saw that I put, it was breaking the one day downtrend, looking for a move to supply around 40s. IONQ, one day downtrend, close to breaking out. And I'll probably look for a move to supply on that as well. <clears throat> And I go ahead and add the um, the trading view links with it too, because when I when I'm posting on the Watchlist channel, I want you guys to get a visualization of the chart. It's one of the most important things, so you're not just blindly taking a direction. Looks like we got ticker symbol docs right here. Looks like it might have a falling wedge set up. Um, this is probably one of my favorite patterns, to be honest. And it looks like I go ahead and add a trend, light, a trend line alert. And <clears throat> the reason you add the trend line alert is because when it's reached, you can go ahead and trade the breakout or you can trade puts on a rejection. <clears throat> so we put docs we put our ticker symbol time frame one day falling wedge set up forming we'll set an alert at the trend line and wait for the breakout or you could even take puts when it rejects so multiple ways to look at downtrend line well there's two ways sorry and you see that I'm putting my planned on direction so I'm trading calls for Mara calls for IONQ calls for docs and maybe puts if it rejected And you always want to wait for confirmation. All right, and it looks like we got Tesla right here. I don't think I found anything on Tesla. Um, not quite. Got coin right there. Um, already bounced from the trend line, so I probably wasn't trying to do that one. Viacom, too much selling. MSTR spreads are too wide. All right, here's MU Micron Technology. Looks like we erase and start with a fresh slate here. So I add a one a one week supply zone, which is right where the price is at right now, and that can give us two opportunities. Um, since it's so close to breaking out, we could look for a rejection here off one week supply. Or we can set an alert over 97 and trade the breakout. And that's the beauty of setting alerts. You wait for them to hit. You don't always have to act on a trade right when you see it. You can make sure that it meets criteria and um, you know that you're patient. Waiting for that perfect setup, right? That, that one good trade. So I go ahead and draw some Fibonacci retracements. Usually um, if I trade big breakouts like this, I like to use the 1.272 extension as a breakout target. And that's usually my first breakout target. And then we go ahead and add a MU alert at 97. And that will indicate a breakout of supply zone. And I also like the downside opportunity here if Monday we flushed. Um, it kind of closed the inside the supply though, so that bulls could take that bullish. Um, it just depends. We'll have to see the sentiment on Monday. So I put MU currently at one week supply zone. Could see some short term resistance.
And another thing is really important to wait for confirmation. Um, you know, just because you get an alert and it triggers and the criteria is met, you know, it, it might be smart to wait a little bit. Maybe see how the one one day candle is going to close or maybe see how short term price is going to react. Pay attention to the volume, etc. That way you're not getting faked out. All right. Looks like we get a little fast forward here, so I'm guessing we don't find any setups. I did, I did like this laser setup a lot, but um, it's already breaking out the double bottom resistance. So, all right, here's the LVS. I do like this one. You can see that it's almost got like a big like down channel kind of narrowing down to a falling wedge a little bit but there's also a short term resistance line too right here and I like that breakout so when it gets above supply that could be given a good trade up to the next blue trend line resistance that you see right above that so I mean analyzing is all about thinking ahead and also thinking about what you see right now on the chart. Um, you have to think about what price will do ahead of time, right? At least just a little bit. You don't have to think too hard about it and get paralyzed, but it's good to think about. So what we're thinking about in this trade is we're trading the breakout, yes, but we're also being mindful of the overhead trend line resistance. And we also have to be aware of the supply above that as well. Let's see what we type out here. We got LVS, confirmed breakout. It's actually a short term breakout because there's another trend line resistance above. And I put good, could make a good trade. up to next trend line resistance. Sorry, it looks like I was trying to think of what to type. I did not fast forward this part. All the um, live examples that I ended up typing out, I wanted you guys to be able to see, so. And you don't have to always type out what you're seeing. Um, I'm just showing you guys how I create my trade ideas list um, every weekend. I've been doing it probably the last month or so, last month and a half. Um, it's been helping me a lot more with uh, just trying to stick to solid setups. I still do like to, you know, day trade spy and, you know, take those speculative trades that, you know, you're just basing off the intraday chart, but I really enjoy doing the larger time frames. So we got snap here, total down channel. I actually lost some money on that one. Lift, really nice breakout, but I mean, it's already so close to supply. And then we got shop. Pretty sure this actually turns into a setup that we add to the list. We got a one day downtrend breakout. Looks great. Um, super close to supply there. It's the only thing concerning, and you got that light blue 50 EMA right there. That can definitely act as resistance. So I believe this would make a good short term trade. Um, if you were to swing trade this and you're trying to catch the breakout, um, you'd need time on the contracts because there's a good chance when it runs into supply. It's going to reject at least a little bit. You got a demand zone down there, drop base rally. Let's see if 
we find anything else on this. I honestly don't remember. <laughs> All right, and then we add the next bullet point. We got shop, downtrend breakout. I'm guessing I just type up looking for a quick move up to supply. Right, and due to supply being so close, this would need time on the contracts. Or you can just day trade the short move. And that's another thing, you know, you're utilizing your levels, you're utilizing your um, knowledge on supply and demand zones and seeing how close price is to getting to these areas so you know how long you have or how much price range you have. And um, if it's too close, you know, to supply sometimes, it, it might be good to just wait for it to break out of it or you can try to take puts off the zone, you know. And it looks like I add, or you can day trade puts when it reaches supply since it's so close, so. All right, we got another fast forward here. I'm guessing I don't find any setups. Here's FUTU, F-U-T-U, ticker symbol. Looks super close to breaking out with this falling wedge. Um, and it's definitely worth a trade over 50-10 it looks like, uh, where you see that arrow. You'd want it to break upside. So I'm pretty sure I, have, I already had an alert set there. So um, there's two trades. You did trade it when it breaks out of the downtrend or if you really wanted serious confirmation you could just go ahead and wait for it to get above 50.10 but um you could take the downtrend breakout and then trade up to 50.10 because that could act as resistance or you could just wait So looks like I put Futsu, falling wedge breakout, getting closer. I would wait for 50.10, old support, slash new resistance, to get cleared over before looking at calls. All right, on to the next. Don't think DOCN had any setup that I really cared for. Yeah, LLY, nice channel. FCX, inside supply. WDC had nice breakout, but it's already, I mean, a couple candles over. BBBY. Looks like Victoria's Secret might have had one, but. I didn't really like it. AMAC kind of has a symmetrical wedge, ascending pattern. All right, here's Uber. I definitely found a setup on this. Um, even if it's not completely there yet, this is a pre-anticipated setup. Um, so where you can set alerts and wait for the setup to hit. Since it's not directly at the downtrend line yet, the upper trend line resistance, we just uh, set an alert. And here you got your bottom part of the wedge. So your bottom trend line res or trend line support, and then you come back above and draw point to point, and see that it's narrowing down into a falling wedge. It 
sometimes you just have to play around, you know? Just play around with it, see what looks the best, see what makes the most sense. And this is setting up on a one week chart, so you know when this breaks out, this is gonna be a really nice setup because it's been consolidating in a downtrend for so long. Looks like since before 2021, almost. Looks like we draw a Fibonacci retracement. Found strong support at the 50 and then fell through that. Didn't quite get to the 61.8. And I kind of just switch back and forth between regular support and resistance. And sometimes I'll draw out the fib retracements. It just, it just depends. Um, a lot of times I'll just check multiple different kind of tools and see what's making the most sense. So I put Uber, setting an alert. Forgive the slow typing, because this is me directly trying to think of what to type for my brief description. So it might take a second. <laughs> All right, Uber, setting alert at downtrend line. We'll look at calls on the breakout or puts on a rejection. I would like to bet on calls though, especially when it breaks out because that's a nice falling wedge setup, so. All right, on to the next. Cat had kind of a nice one, but not quite there yet. Got trip, UPST, I really like this one. This one looks super close to breaking out, um, especially above that 157.26 red line you see there. Um, when it gets above that, it's probably going to see some serious momentum. Alright, I put UPST right at one day downtrend line. We'll set an alert for a breakout trade. And that's for calls. Can also set an alert above 157.26. That was a 157.26 I was just talking about. And it looks like I got stuck right there. to the next this KSS setup kind of has like a falling megaphone pattern which is nice but I usually only trade the breakout on those patterns all right and this Levi setup is actually pretty good um, it's got a short-term breakout I'm pretty sure from what I remember I chart so many things, so just remember that I'm, I'm basically reacting to <laughs> what I charted prior, but I charted a lot of stuff, so I mean, it's, it's hard to remember sometimes, <laughs> but I'm almost positive this is a one day downtrend breakout here that I'm about to add. So add the supply zone, you got a couple key levels, uh, 2460s and then 2380s it looks like. And we got a drop base rally demand zone. Got 
and you can see I'm, ba I'm basically just um, when I'm drawing the regular support and resistance I'm looking for the you know clear reversal pivot areas or price clearly clearly reversed all right we got Levi one day downturn breakout and I'm guessing I'm looking a type that I'm looking for a move up the supply and maybe looking for a pop above that um, resistance or old support that's right at the uh, 2463 you want to see a pop above that for sure I hope you guys are enjoying this so far I know that it um might be a little repetitive right going through all these charts and you're just like what the hell like how long is this going to take but this is what analyzing is all about um it's all about recognizing patterns and being repetitive because <laughs> that's how you get good at trading and identifying oh i really see that plug setup was nice and this UPS setup is super nice too, but it's just too close to supply. AMD had a nice setup, but too close to supply. Could maybe take puts. MTCH, too close to supply. Even though it's a nice breakout to back test. Alright, and this is FDX. I'm pretty sure we found a setup on this. It looks like a one week downtrend breakout. And it's definitely poking out already. And you can see that MT4 oscillator is uh, giving a long signal down there. It's crossing over to the upside. And then we got that, what is that, 255 um, resistance area. Definitely want to see a pop above that. You got a 234.79 old support area. You got a drop base rally demand zone as well. And you can see I'm kind of just analyzing um, the more the more recent area, right? And you can also go back. You don't just have to do the recent area. You can go back and find gear levels from a year or two ago if you really wanted to I like to think that the more recent areas hold a lot of weight because a lot of that um, fresh liquidity from the recent moves could still be sitting there so those resistance areas you know are other areas that institutions and other whales and toots and all that are looking for so what you see is what others are also seeing and they tend to try to repeat that so we got FDX close to breaking out of a one week symmetrical wage and if you guys saw my trend lines triangles and wedges video you already know what the symmetrical wedge is it can break in either direction but it looks like it's getting closer to breaking upside here so because it's already poking out a line then we got if it can clear above 255 30 resistance that's even better confirmation and that's good for calls Add our link onto the next bullet. I'm pretty sure the next one is TGT, and I'm pretty sure I find a setup on that as well. I really like this one week demand zone that it has. I actually saw somebody post um, this demand zone in the option chat before I charted this so uh, shout out to him 
And we got a one week supply zone overhead. You can see the light blue one week 50 EMA was breached. Um, it was broken, so keep an eye on that. You're gonna want it to get it back above 222, what is that, 222.80s. You could just set an alert over 223. And that would actually be a really good setup. If you can get it back above that support and break back up, I have a feeling that it could spring up. Especially with that one week demand zone and you can see a strong wick off of it. In our exact description here, TGT, strong wick off one week demand. You need to see it clear back over to 23. And that's gonna be for calls. To the next pretty sure we have a fast forward here I don't find anything on GM I try to trade a butterfly on GM actually and it lost $80 on it <laughs> I think plays around too much all right and we got Sava right here um you could just see that huge head and shoulders pattern I actually almost skipped this and then I saw that I'm like you know what I could actually probably make a future trade out of this so we drop a head and shoulders um, using the head and shoulders tool on trading view and for head and shoulders you're you're only trading the neckline breakdown and same if you're trading an inverse head and shoulders you're only trading the neckline break out to the upside so this is the opposite. This is regular head and shoulders. You're playing the neckline break down to the downside. So this is good for shorts, good for puts. Well, it looks like that damn magnet started getting to be a pain in my butt. So turn that off for a second. And it looks like your neckline is 31.44. So you uh, set an alert, and you just wait for the breakdown. Whenever it hits, it hits. Um, when you get the alert, sit and chill for a second, see how, see how price is working. Um, it doesn't mean act right away. You know, check a couple more things, see if volume is supporting sellers. Uh, see if it's just gonna wick off when it breaks down and fake out and bounce back up. You know, that it happens all the time. A lot of these can end up being traps, so it's always good to wait and see. So we got Sava. Got a large one week head and shoulders. Setting an alert on the neckline break to trade puts on the flush we got our link simple as that and we just wait for that that'll be a future trade maybe potentially that's why we put out alerts for future reference because maybe one day when you're having a slow day you're not finding any trade something hits and ding 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 you got a winner this Etsy setup is really nice but uh I don't know. I'm, I'm not, I think I saw like it's some insider sales, so I was like, nah. That might see some downside. All right, we got Tilray, pain in the ass stock. I actually got some January calls that have just gotten crushed on this thing, but uh, it's got a falling wedge set up here, real nice. If we could get some volume, um, you could see a move back up to ten. 
might take a miracle or a really good earnings report which you can see the little earnings icon down there it's coming up you got hmm, what is that 18 days left so we got Tilray one day falling wedge breakout might need more volume for upside calls then we add our link and like I said yes this is already you know a, a decent amount of trades but it doesn't mean you have to trade them all you're just charting these out just in case you never know how you're gonna feel in that exact moment when you see the setup and when the market opens you know you, you might like one better than the other so it's good to have options and this BA setup is really nice looks like we got a one day downtrend breakout almost kind of has a wedge formation as well as another um, trend line resistance overhead kind of in a channel formation and that would probably take a move up to supply and where's that supply is that around like 208 or 210 area so that might be a good um, short-term trade uh, BA always has a lot of sellers on it so you can pretty much make a good bet on um, when it reaches supply uh, it's going to see some resistance so I know Cisco setup would actually be pretty good on the 1.272 rejection for puts but I don't think I added that one we got Airbnb here ticker symbol ABNB Got a nice little poke out of the downtrend here and a couple little small supply zones so this would make another short-term trade and you'd want to see a pop above that um, light blue 50 EMA and the 50 EMA is basically um, it's more like the medium term uh, trend and the 200 EMA is like your long-term trend basically and then your 9 and 21 are your short terms. So it looks like we're definitely going to be adding this one for calls. Um, don't see any really crazy obvious supports or anything. Um, there was this one week demand zone right here it's a rally base rally one week demand zone so that's why you see such a strong bounce off that area um there's more most likely institutional orders and liquidity waiting to be filled and you could just see the volume as soon as it touched the zone it's ridiculous and we draw the arrow that would be your target At least on the short term um, if you didn't have time on your contracts that would need to be your target if you have time on the contracts you could wait for it to chew through that supply and head to the next supply <clears throat> all right we got a B and B short-term downtrend breakout could see move up to overhead supply and it's gonna be for calls by the way could maybe do a short-term um, day trade
and that's going to be the same thing for BA as well. So I just copy and pasted that because they both kind of are close to supply. So taking that into account, that Disney setup is really good, but it was in supply, so I didn't mark it. LMT had a big gap overhead. Macy's nice demand zone bounce. MGM looks like it's at supply in a 61.8, so that'd be a good rejection. And then GE, oh, I'm almost positive this is a downtrend breakout. Yep. So we got GE, General Electric, one day downtrend breakout. And it looks like it maybe had a supply zone at the bottom there. I don't know if it's a one week or one day. Pretty sure I delete that though and um, make a fresh drop base rally zone because there's one right there. The fresher the better because there might be fresh liquidity sitting in the zone when it comes back to tap it. So, And this would also have a pretty sh relatively short move up to supply. And I'm pretty sure this is the last slide for this recording. Um, I'm currently debating, because uh, I still have so many tickers to go, I'm already at 42 minutes. If uh, I'll add more, because we've already had about 16 setups just off of what we went through here, so. We got GE. And we got the same same thing, a uh, short term downtrend breakout, and uh, we'll be looking for a move up to supply since it's so close. And I think that's the yeah that, that's the last clip, guys. Thanks so much for watching.